With the Thousand Year Door remake coming out soon, I decided I wanted to try the original again since everyone loves it so much. And to be entirely honest, I don't see why this is the game Nintendo fans have been clamoring about for the last decade plus. I went into the Thousand Year Door expecting to have a good time, but I often found myself frustrated or bored while playing this. The obvious problem with the game that is frequently cited by its dissenters is backtracking. And it's true, this game has an ungodly amount of backtracking in it, even more than I was led to believe by the game's detractors. There's Chapter 7, of course, which infamously forces you to backtrack to every location you've previously visited. But the majority of the other chapters in the game require backtracking as well. Chapters 2, 4, 5, and 6 all have significant backtracking segments, like a seriously inexcusable amount of backtracking. Ironically, I found the backtracking in Chapter 7 to be less offensive than that in any of those other chapters. While Chapter 7's fetch quest is the most blatant disregard for the player's time in Thousand Year Door, that quest is at least over and done with before too long. In the other chapters I mentioned, however, the entire chapter is completely riddled with quests, locks, and keys that force you to retread the same ground that you've literally just explored multiple times. And the nail in the coffin for this topic is Mario's overworld movement, which leaves a lot to be desired. Mario is very slow, and the game has a lot of friction, and it just feels a little jank in the overworld. Even the option to run has baggage attached to it, as you need to switch to Yoshi as your active party member to run. And while dashing on Yoshi, you can't talk to NPCs, jump vertically, or open doors, which will slow you down as you repeatedly mount and dismount Yoshi to perform these essential tasks. Thousand Year Door is downright miserable at times because of how unconcerned it is with keeping things flowing at a reasonable pace. It's a really big bummer to me that Thousand Year Door is held back so much by its overworld traversal, because the battle system is really fun. Turn-based battles punctuated by action commands is a good formula, and the breadth of the options that Mario and his partners have in this game is wide and very creative. But even when looking at just the combat, I still think this game fails to be consistently compelling. The encounters in the game are incredibly easy. Even though I challenged myself in this playthrough by exclusively choosing BP as my level up reward and banning the use of power bounce, most enemy encounters and even some bosses failed to hold my attention. The Thousand Year Door fails to truly capitalize on its great battling system until Chapter 8 in the Pit of 100 Trials, leaving much of the game's remaining combat feeling underwhelming. I think that Paper Mario 64 should have been the game that fans dreamed up a revival for, instead of the Thousand Year Door. The two games are mechanically similar, but I find Paper Mario 64 to just be miles more enjoyable to play. It doesn't have the problem with backtracking that TTYD has. Its combat system, while simpler, feels more balanced. And to be honest, TTYD's subversive tone isn't anywhere close to appealing to me as Paper Mario 64's cozy storybook aesthetic. TTYD is clearly designed to contrast Paper Mario 64's comfy tone by placing Mario in a gritty and grimy setting including things like the Mafia, a gallows, a bomb threat, catcalling, and other locations you would never see in another Mario game. And I understand that TTYD's willingness to break the Mario mold is exactly why many of its biggest fans like it so much, but I often find it to be contrarian for the sake of it and just generally less appealing than Paper Mario 64's genuineness. The Thousand Year Door also attempts to repeat some ideas that the original Paper Mario did, but I think it ends up doing a worse job at them. There's a penguin murder mystery in Paper Mario 64, and I think it's cute, it's short, and it's such a subversion to the expectations set by the rest of the game that it's funny. In TTYD, there's a similar bomb threat mystery, but I don't think it's funny because it doesn't subvert the game's tonal expectations, and it massively overstays its welcome by taking up half the chapter and not having any combat to break it up. I have a similar problem with the sewer of both games. The sewer is a place you may explore between chapters in Paper Mario 64, where you can discover optional goodies, but in TTYD, you're forced to visit the bottom of the sewers each chapter just to progress, and it has a deliberately antagonistic layout, featuring one-way paths and pointless roadblocks that make it very annoying to explore. TTYD also feels obtuse at times, which is a problem I never experienced in Paper Mario 64. There is one thing I think TTYD does better than Paper Mario 64 though, and that's its action commands. Even though both games have very similar action command systems, TTYD has a much more diverse pool of action commands for the player to perform. Multiple partners and attacks in Paper Mario 64 share the same or similar inputs, 
whereas in TTYD, it'll be either altered or completely different. Unlike in Paper Mario 64, the action commands in TTYD did not end up feeling overused by the end of the game, and stylish moves and super guards were really great additions that kept me engaged. Overall, I wouldn't quite say I had a bad time playing TTYD, but I certainly wouldn't call the experience overall a good time either. It's a very mixed experience, featuring many lows and some highs. While the Thousand Year Door does feature improvements over Paper Mario 64 in its battle system, it fails to capitalize on that strength during the majority of the game's length, and I greatly prefer Paper Mario 64 thanks to its simpler and more streamlined design and cozy vibe. It makes me sad that I don't like the Thousand Year Door, because I really wanted to like the sequel to Paper Mario 64, which is an amazing game. But it just doesn't capture the same magic in my opinion, 